various conditions, is it not true that they have no self-nature? Now if a thing has no self-nature, it cannot have other nature nor both self-nature and other nature. Why? Because the so-called other nature has, in fact, no self-nature. If we say that something exists because of other nature, then a cow exists because of horse nature, a horse exists because of cow nature, a peach exists because of apple nature, an apple exists because of peach nature, and so on. They are all, really impossible. One might say that something exists not because of a certain other nature, but because of a certain other. But this cannot be the case either. Why? If one says that a mat exists because of a certain grass, then the grass and the mat would be one body, and the grass could not be called other. If one says that the grass is other with respect to the mat, then he could not claim that the mat exists because of the grass. Moreover, the so-called grass has no self-nature either. Why? Because the grass is also produced from various conditions. Since grass has no self-nature, one cannot say that because of grass nature the mat exists. Therefore, the mat cannot have grass as its substance. Thus, for the same reason the production of a jar, cheese, and other things from external causal conditions cannot be established. Similarly, production by internal causal conditions cannot be established. As it is stated in the 70 treatise, 12 chains of causal conditions really have no production. If they have production, do they have it in one mind moment or in many mind moments? The so-called 12 causal conditions really and originally have no production. If there is production, does it occur in one mind moment or in many mind moments? If it occurs in one moment, then a cause and an effect would happen together at the same time. But this is impossible. Why? Because a cause is prior to an effect. If production occurs in many mind moments, then the twelve causal conditions would be distinct from one another. Each of the earlier ones would occur within a particular mind moment and disappear with that mind moment. Then, what would be the causal condition of the later ones? Since what disappears with a particular mind moment is non-existent, how can it affect others? If there are twelve causal conditions, they should either be in one mind moment or in many mind moments. But neither is possible. Comment. Nagarjuna here discusses an idea which is not well examined in the middle treatise, dash. He wants to show that the so-called twelve chains of causal conditions are really empty. He also argues that one cannot use mind, consciousness, or an internal element to explain the reality of the universe. Therefore, all conditions are empty. Since conditions are empty, things produced by conditions are also empty. Thus, one should know all created things are empty. If created things are empty, how much more so with the self? Because of created things such as the five skandhas, the twelve sense fields, and the eighteen elements, one can say there is the self. Only if there is something burnable can there be the fact of burning. Now since skandhas, sense fields, and elements are empty, nothing can be called self. If there is nothing burnable, there cannot be the fact of burning. Comment Buddhists divide existence into two main groups, Samskrita and Asarskrita. The Samskrita comprise such dwai dot armas as are tied to chains of causation and are capable of producing effects, while the Asamskrita exist unconditionally. The five skandhas, twelve sense fields and eighteen elements belong to the Samskrita. Space, nirvara and a negative state due to the absence of proper conditions belong to the Asamskrita. The five skandhas are form, sensation, perception, impulse and consciousness. The twelve sense fields are the eye, objects of sight, the ear, sounds, the nose, smells, the tongue, tastes, body, touchable objects, mind and mind objects. The eighteen elements are the six sense faculties, the six sense objects and the corresponding six sense consciousnesses. Nagarjuna argues that both the Samskrita and the Asamskrita are empty. Since they are empty, all things are empty. The Sutra says, the Buddha told Bhikkhus. That because of self there can be self-belongings. If there is no self, 
then there are no self-belongings. Thus, since created things are empty, we should know that the non-created nirvana is also empty. Why? The elimination of the five skandhas without producing another five skandhas is called nirvana. But, the five skandhas are originally empty. What is to be eliminated to be called nirvana? And the self is also empty. Who can obtain nirvana? Moreover, non-produced things are called nirvana. If produced things can be established, non-produced things can be established. As mentioned in the previous examination of causes and conditions, produced things cannot be established. This will be discussed again. So produced things cannot be established. Because there are produced things, others can be called non-produced. If produced things cannot be established, how can non-produced things be established? Therefore created things, non-created things, and the self are all empty.